Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing Eco's First Continent from AEG. And Eco's First Continent is a game where you and the other players are all working together to build this shared continent. You're, you're building out the land, you're adding tiles, you're switching things up, you're adding animals, forests, uh, mountains, all these different things to a shared landmass that you're all working on together. Now, this is not a cooperative game. This is a game which you're trying to get as many points as possible. Hence the point track up here. You're playing either to 60 or 80 points, short or a long game, trying to slowly put cards down on the table and build out your combos to try to figure out how you can get as many points as possible. The game will start with either a preset hand of cards, which the game has rules for that. My own personal preference is once you know the game, go, and, go on into it with a draft. We'll grab some blue cards, some red cards, they have different strength levels or different things that they do, different costs to them, and you're going to start a draft where you'll ultimately end up with 12 cards, 4 blue, 8 red. From there, you will start with 3 cards on the table and then you start the game. You see, every single round in Ecos, you're basically paying bingo. You go ahead and grab a little nice little chunky hefty piece of wood from this bag and you see that's sun over there so sun we're gonna go ahead and grab one of our cubes we're gonna put it down on any of these sun icons on our card we want to get some more zebras on the board so we're gonna start that we keep going we draw another sun so I can go ahead I'll put this one over here let's put it on this let's start getting some trees on the board let's keep going another sun now this is a good part to point out where you do this is a good part to point out that you have your own little card that tells you distribution those suns are not uncommon the sun is the most common element in the bag coming in at 10 sun, 8 water, and then downwards from there until 2 wilds. And you're going to keep drawing until you get a wild, at which point you'll reset the bag. We'll go ahead, we don't really need that sun, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and rotate this over here. And we're going to take this, and we have that. Perfect. Excellent. Let's go ahead and keep slotting that up. You're going to keep going, drawing a sun, rinse and repeat until effectively at some point you fill up a card. Once you've filled up a card, you're going to go ahead and do the things on the card. That will often involve adding things, removing things, changing things. But most of the cards you can see over here are green on the edges, which means they're having a more of an additional effect to the land. Whereas a card that has a red effect, which is very helpful for looking at your opponents, so you have a quick glance at what they're doing, those will often change land masses or remove animals, have more of a negative effect. So at a quick glance, you can kind of see whether your opponents are going to mess with you or just they're generally adding to the landscape. Granted, that can still mess with you, but not as directly or as obviously. So, once you go ahead and you resolve a card, you're going to do what it says. In this case, I'm going to add two zebras to the board. These zebras may be placed in spaces with other non-zebra animals, but must be placed adjacently, so I have to put those together. And then I'm going to go ahead and gain two points, and then I'll gain two points per zebra in this community of zebras. A community is a grouping of shared animals that shares a space with a non-zebra animal. And then, I'll clear these cubes, I'll rotate the card up to the number of leaves a card has. You see, cards have four, three, two, one, or one leaf, which basically indicates the number of times they can be used before they're gone. I'll be able to do this card a total of three times because it's a three leaf card. I can do it, I can rotate it down to two leaves, I can rotate it down to one leaf, and then it's done and out. So again, anywhere from four to one uses on an individual card. That's important because this card, it benefits from your herd of zebras, which means as you add more and more instances, as you use the card more and more times, you'll get a larger and larger herd and be scoring more and more points, which is basically what happens in Ecos. You're going to be playing cards on the table, occasionally rotating your star tile which is very relevant because one of the things the star tile does is as it rotates it allows you to gain additional cards in the pile and or gain additional cubes you see you're limited in the number of cubes you can put down if you start placing too many cubes down and have yourself too widely distributed you won't actually be able to complete cards so gathering more cubes either from your star tile or various card abilities you have those are helpful playing more cards either from your tile or from card abilities that's helpful it gets more cards more options on the table especially as you start to run out and then gaining more cards again from your card abilities or from your star tile you can see a common thread over there all this is designed in order to you to find that combo either from your initial 12 starting cards or from cards you're getting throughout the game to find a combo that will score you chunks of points you see everything in ecos is going to in some way give you a point here and a point there. But the trick, the line of Ecos, is to find the points that will magnify, to find some sort of system that will work for you. Whether you have a bunch of cards that reward you for mountain placement, you start placing mountains on the board and scoring points there. Whether it's trees, whether you have a sequence of cards that's going to add a bunch of zebras to the board, and then you're going to add a bunch of, uh, I don't know, lions or something that will go ahead and eat the zebras, and they'll score additional points for eating them. You'll always have different cards that have the potential for large scoring combinations that might get you 10, 15, 20 points for the single use of a card. 
but it'll take you half the game to build up towards that. It'll take you half the game to build a landmass that will in some way work for what you need over here. That's basically the core of Ecos. Rinse and repeat, uh, putting tokens on these cards, rotating the, rotate the take abilities. Whenever you can't, rotating your star tile, slowly continuously building your engine. Whenever you draw a wild, you're going to reset the bag, pass it to the next person, and continue drawing from the bag. It's basically bingo as you build a continent together. Now, the New Horizons expansion will add a few more things. It adds mostly a bunch of cards, because I'm reviewing to a certain extent the New Horizons expansion. I have the box somewhere available, I don't know exactly. But the New Horizons expansion will add a, a bunch of new cards to the game that merge in, w mix well with the existing cards, and then it adds a new aspect to the game that basically gives you these land masses to go for, these specific symbols. So if I have this card, I can try to build that land mass. If I have that pattern of tiles on the board, then I can go ahead and place this card and then benefit from whatever ability it has in play. So, and those are all going to be a, a whole bunch of these land mass tiles, this special mountain, just different things you can place down the board when you have those. Not a drastic game change by any means, just a lot more of the same, plus those uh, specific continent tiles in the game. Which brings us to the review. Talking about what we like, didn't like, all of that stuff. Starting off with ease of play, though. Rules in this are super, super easy. The entire rulebook is a few pages to browse through, and it's very well written, very clear, contents. I mean, the actual game is like two pages, and there's like a page or two of clarifications around various card abilities. It is an easy game to learn. It is an easy game to teach. Uh, the actual game time will run roughly around 45 minutes or so. It could run a bit longer at larger player counts if you're taking your time or maybe a first game. Or if you're getting faster the game, you can knock out a game in 35 minutes fairly easily. Uh, table space can get fairly large. Right now I have it set up for just what you see, the core components you need plus a single player. As you add more players, as you build up the landmass, it can get larger. You're not talking about a major table hog or anything, but it's a game that will start off very small, but you want to have the space to allow your continent to grow. As far as player count, this is a two to six player game. I have not played it at higher player counts. I've played it at two, three, and four players. Uh, for those, I would say three and four are the sweet spot for me. Two doesn't have as much interaction as I would like on the continent, and then once you start drifting to four, you already start seeing a little more interaction, which makes it harder to pursue your own individual goals, or can make it harder, depending on the cards you're going for. At five and six, I imagine that gets even even more difficult as you have more people involved in the same landmass. So again, I've only played at two, three, and four, but three and four so far are the sweet spot for me. I'd be probably willing to play it at five and six, but not in a rush to do so. And what I will say as far as the gameplay, because of the nature of what you're doing, it's actually simultaneous. So adding additional players doesn't add that much downtime for the most part, for most turns, but then you will have that turn where someone says, pause, pause, I need to resolve this card, which will resolve that card, which will flip that card. You're going to have a bunch of cards triggering in sequence, and the more players will potentially add to the downtime. As far as player interaction in the game, it's fairly decent. It's not huge, but it's fairly decent in the sense that, again, you will have cards that eat other people's animals. You're you're building the landmass together. It's not interaction in the sense, uh, in the typical sense of, you know, me planning around what you're doing, but we all have a hand in this shared continent, so what the other players do definitely matters. This is hardly a multiplayer solitaire in that sense. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, starting off with what I like, which is, to begin with, the pre-game draft. In general, I love drafting. I I love that mechanism of, of building out your car, your hand of cards for the game. I like it when you have, you know, initial placement in Catan. I like it in Seasons when you have initial pre-game draft, pre-game draft. And I like it in Ecos, where once you play your first game with your preset hand of cards, you jump straight into a draft. And then from there, you're already trying to think through what you're building as you play. Grab a few cards that sync well together, build a few trees. Oh, those animals like to be near trees. You'll get extra points for those. These animals are going to eat that. These these oceans are going to surround the, the, the deserts that you place in, and it's all going to work together to give you points. The problem is you're only starting with three of those cards. So you need to start thinking through which three cards are going to be my starting cards. Which cards will let me add more cards? Do I want to play a card that lets me play cards? Or do I want to play a card that lets, lets me start putting elephants on the board? There's all these different patterns and pathways you can pursue, both your initial draft and then even once you have the cards, how you choose to move forward from there. And this game has a ton of variability. I mean, this stack of cards is ridiculously large. I mean, granted, there's the expansion mixed in here, but even before I added the expansion, there are plenty of cards to go through in Ecos. They're, they're going to feel to a certain degree, some degree of sameness in them, as you're like, okay, put down a, the mountain tile and the variation of symbols on the side, those will change. But even though some of them will feel samey, a lot of them feel very different. There's always, every single time I play, there's always someone who's like, ooh, I've never seen this card before, and in some way it works well for what they're doing. There's a lot of variability, and that means also a lot of combos. A lot of different ways things sync together. My most recent game had me spending the first half of the game building up this herd of Zebras. 
Predators, only to then spend, send them crashing down as I sent these wild Predators out to chase them and eat them, scoring 16, 18 points on a single feast as I just devoured all the zebras in a spot. It was messy, it was brutal, and it's something I hadn't done before. There's always different pathways, always different combos. My wife, Rena, was sitting there trying to surround all these land masses with water and then scoring 7 points per surrounded tile, scoring chunks of 21 points at a time. Again, something new we hadn't seen before. There's lots of combos and lots of variability in the game. This is a lot of game. There's a lot of game in Ecos for the amount of time it takes to play it and for the weight of the game. This is a fairly accessible already. The rules are fairly easy. It's easy to teach, easy to play. It is an accessible game that gives you a lot of game within that accessible game. And I also like how the game ensures that you never get nothing. I mean, the game runs on a bingo mechanic, which is a prime candidate for, okay, congratulations, you got something I didn't. But first of all, it is to a certain extent up to you to take that into account, both in your initial three cards that you play out, as well as throughout the game. If you ever play cards that just have the same symbols and therefore a bunch of symbols, if you don't have any grass on your, on your cards, you're not going to score anything when grass comes out. So to a certain extent, it's already on you. But even then, the game gives you that aspect of rotating your star tile. You never get nothing. You're always working towards something, whether it's as efficient as what you like, whether it's the card you want to finish, you're always getting some form of progress in the game, some form of movement forward, and I like that the game does that. As far as what I don't like, the first thing and the biggest thing for me is really the fact that the game feels like it's ending right when you get your engine crashing in or running on those big moves. I mean, the game comes with a 60 point game and an 80 point game I've never played it at the 60 point game I if anything we talk about whether we should bump it to 100 points because we feel that the first 30 or 40 points really has you scoring five points here six points here small little movements that are fun it's nice it's part of the game for sure but it doesn't feel as as amazing as when you score that large card but those large cards often require a big part of the game to work up to. And so we've consistently had it that right when somebody crosses 80 and the game end triggers, that's right when players are getting the engine going and right when they're starting to get those fun, cool moves. And so it does have that element. Again, we've talked about bumping up the score required to win uh, to 100. We haven't done so yet. We might at some point. I don't really know. I don't know why we haven't done so. We keep talking about it and they're just not doing it. But but yeah, that's my biggest critique that the, the larger, cooler combos take enough time to build up that you usually only get one or two extra executions on them before the game is over. And then secondly, the tokens on the board, because of the way you have these giant bags of tokens, and I have like three of these by the way, I just put one on the table for right now, but you have these token trays full of tiny little tokens, and you can see on the board right here already, I have one, two, three, four, five, six different animal tokens on the board. But they're small, and they're not immediately obvious, and if you start having a game where more animals are present, it can get very easy to not immediately see how the board's presented. The terrain, the trees, the mountains, those are phenomenal. But the actual tokens don't have a enough distinguishing them. I almost feel like going for realistic uh, realistic pictures on smaller smaller tokens didn't have the same directness. Again, it's not the worst, but it certainly has had problems in larger animal pools where you're like, what is going on on this board? There's just way too much to see at a glance. As far as I can see others not liking, first of all, there's a big luck factor here. Luck factor in terms of anything from the initial card draft, whether you find a combo. I mean, if you don't get a good combo in this game, if you don't start the game off with some sort of something to drive for, you might feel like you go this entire game a little bit aimless. If for the most part it doesn't really happen, you can find something, you can also draw and gain cards, but if you don't have, like I've seen it happen with players, where they just didn't have something they were driving towards, and that can make the game feel a little more aimless. It means the entire game, you're getting those small four or five point chunks, and it's fine, but it doesn't have the same amazing feeling of executing on a combo you've been working towards the whole entire game. And so that luck factor, both in the initial draft, in the cards you gain as you go ahead and grab two cards and then take one, some of those will be amazing for what you're doing, others not so much. And then of course the bingo-esque mechanic of just drawing tiles in a bag, and whether it works for you or not, sure, you'll always get something, but turning your start tile may not be this as beneficial as somebody else completing their cards because they keep drawing the sequences they need. And then lastly, there is a small scourge factor. Those red cards over there can really mess with opponents. Going back to my wife who's trying to encircle her little islands, I was able to ding one of these from water into whatever, into desert or forest, and then remove two adjoining areas, costing her 14 points the next time she executed on the tile. And that's not the only time that will happen. You will have predators eating your animals, you'll have people removing land masses from the board and just letting everything sink into the ocean. You will have a variety of things happen in this game that definitely fall under that Scrooge umbrella. Doesn't bother me, we, we enjoy it, but certainly something to be mindful of, especially that this is a lighter game and that's something that will come with this experience. As far as final thoughts on Ecos, 
Ecos is a fun, simple, and accessible game of building out a continent together. It's about finding and building your combo. It's about finding this, I mean, it's kind of a bingo-esque little mechanic of just trying to draw tokens in the bag as you figure out which combination of cards will work for you. Overall, I really enjoy this one. It's a game that I keep finding reasons to dive into. It is on the lighter side, and it does have just a lot of luck going on, and, and the lighter is not necessarily inherently a critique. I always have to like give this disclaimer. Light is not a critique, but it is a factor that does put Ecos a little bit lower on the sheer satisfaction action uh, a scale in terms of what I'm going to dive into. But I really enjoy it. I like the combos, I like the variability, I like the process of building the, the content together with other players. This is a 3.5 out of 5 for me. It's a really enjoyable experience that I'm never going to turn down. A little on the lighter side, a little bit too much luck for me to really sink my teeth into it, but one that I'm always happy to give a shot, always happy to play, and never regret while well, sitting down to play. I will note that the expansion New Horizons did nothing for me. I like it, I'm happy I have it, but it didn't improve the experience. It was a step sideways for me. I liked the ghost before, and then I got more cards, and some of those cards had continent patterns, and I liked it the same much after. So, if you're looking to be conservative on your money, I would recommend the base game, but the expansion, unless you unless you really feel like you need it, it didn't really do anything for our experience. Did not take away, but did not add. As far as other game recommendations, if you like Ecos, first of all, you can try out Via Magica, a lighter, more even more accessible version of, of, of the bingo S mechanic, where you're drawing things from a bag, trying to complete portals, Via Magica is even lighter, very family friendly, very colorful, vibrant artwork, a great game. And then Gods of Dinosaurs. If you like the idea of building out your patterns or building out your little continent, but you want a little more control over your own ecosystem as opposed to having other players mess with yours, Gods of Dinosaurs from Pandasaurus Games will give you that experience. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, have a good one.